Welcome back to the little Welsh cottage. As you know, in April is my 50th birthday and a few people have asked me what day is it exactly. And because of data protection and all this, I'm just going to say it's a birthday month. So we're going to have celebrations all month. So a friend of mine came down recently and we went to Too Good to Waste, the antique shop, and we were going around. And he said, oh, what do you think of that? And I went, oh, yeah, that's nice. And yeah, that's nice. Anyway, at the end of the little trip, he surprises me with a few gifts. So I've got a plate where I can put my Welsh cakes on, even though I am going to cut down on cakes. It'll make it more of a special event when this comes out and the cakes are going on there. So I've got that. So it's surprising how this is already starting to fill up. I liked this bowl that I saw. Not sure what I'm going to do with it. They used to have these bowls, I think, in bedrooms to wash their faces. So I've got that. I've also got another one, which I'm using as a fruit bowl, and it is green glass. I do love a bit of green glass, as you know. I also bought these. Well, he, he bought them as gifts. Two black cats. So I might call them, I don't know, Maureen and Gladys. There you go, beautiful. I can't remember if I've shown you this. I bought this for the garden or for the allotment. It is a metal rusty. So for the time being, it's staying in here. I'm a bit dubious about putting it in the house garden, to be honest, just in case it scares my own cats, if they just see a shadow. And then, I got a gift from Christine. She sent a card. Thank you very much, Christine. And I mentioned in one of my videos recently that I was going to have a bath and it would be nice to have candles, but I didn't have any. So she has sent me some candles in these really beautiful sort of jugs. And the smell of, the, of it is absolutely gorgeous. I'll just bring them over and so you can have a closer look. There they are. Four of them. Nice patterns on the side. Then all you do is you just lift the lid off. Like that. And then you have your candle in there. And obviously when the candle then goes, I can use these for, I don't know. What could I use these for? Maybe for putting some more candles in. But suggestions below. So thank you very much to Christine for them. I'm also going to keep the box as well. It's such a nice attractive box. And she sent lights. These are lights that you can charge up on your computer. So it's got a USB stick. So you attach that to whatever. And her suggestion was that I put the lights in the cabinet. And it's just a simple tap. And I need to read, to read the instructions because I think there's a way of slightly turning the color of the lights from this white to, because I've accidentally dropped it and all of a sudden it turned orange. And then I tapped it and then it turned white again. So I think there's a way of changing the color. But I don't have to attach it to this. I could just put it in the cupboard like so. So I've got two of them. And these are really good. I'm really impressed by these. So I may actually get some more of these. I'm assuming they're on Amazon. I might get some more and put them in the shed when I start going down to the allotment 
because yes, I have been given an allotment. I haven't collected the keys yet. I'm going to collect them in the next few days. So one of them in the shed would be good. Although somebody told me, and I can't remember who it was now, that in order to keep her bills down, she has put throughout her house lights similar to this, but ones that are activated when you go close to them. And I thought that might be quite a good idea for the kitchen. Because in the night, sometimes when you come down for a, a cup of tea about three o'clock in the morning, you don't want to put the big light on. You just want to have something uh, subtle. So I think I might look into a activated light. So if you know of any, tell me in the comments below. So I haven't decided where I'm going to, going to fit these up yet, so I'll just put them there for the time being. And if you remember, Yvonne sent me a card the other week, so that's gone into the cupboard. So thank you very much for the gifts. All right, let's put this in. I've sent off for some knobs, some new knobs for the, uh, for the secretary here. There you go. Right, I'm gonna have a cup of tea now, and also the postman's just called. I had a postcard recently. Chris has gone on holiday to Iceland. And he sent a postcard of a cat with a Viking hat on. So thank you very much for that, Chris. And the postman has just brought all these. So I've got no idea. It certainly feels like a birthday month. 50 years old. Just to think, I'll never see another 50 years. I can guarantee you that. That's a lot hotter than I thought. All right, I'm gonna use one of my coasters from floating our boat. Let's have a look then. So all this is stuff that's been sent to me via the post office box, which initially I only had for three months, but it's been quite fun to receive gifts. So I might keep it on until the end of the year. I like to try and guess what things are. And this feels like Got some wires in it? I'm not sure. Feels like there's a lot of bits to it. I should have brought a scissors in. Ah! <laughs> it's a toolkit. It's uh, sc screwdrivers, uh, positive and uh, what's it called? Phillips. And the flat one. Is there a card? Is there a, a little... Ah, there it is. There's... Hold on. There's a letter to it. Dear Sean, love your channel from Jason. Thank you very much, Jason. Jason's been here for quite a while on the channel. Look at that. That is glorious. That will go with the rest of my tools that I had the other the other day. Look at that. Didn't have a tool a week ago. And now I could open my own tool shop. So thank you very much to Jason for the tools. Now I think this is two. I'm not sure. It's a box within a box, I think. this well packed okay one two 
Ah, I know what these are. So, a company reached out to me last week and they wanted to know if I wanted to trial their new security cameras, their new wildlife cameras. So I said I would do it, but only if they gave me two. If you don't ask, you don't know, do you? And they have. So I'm going to have these for the allotment. And what I thought was, the reason why I wanted two was because if I have one at the top plot and one down the bottom of the plot, and then somebody tried to pinch one, at least one of the cameras will film who's pinching. But also, I spoke to some of uh, the wildlife groups and they've set up some bat boxes. And I heard in the village the other day that wild boar has been spotted on top of the mountain, along with deer. And apparently they escaped from a country park about eight miles away, Markham Park. And the deer have been on the mountain for quite a few years. So they've, uh, they've, ad they've adjusted, you know, to life in the wild. But the wild boar has only recently been seen. So I said to this community group, when I get this camera, I might put one of them, I'll lend one to them so they can put them on the mountainside and we can see what we can see. As long as the wild boar doesn't come and pinch it, it'll, it'll be okay. So what, what I'll do is, I'll do a video just about these for themselves. Because I have to get a card. So they're solar paneled cameras. Yeah, I'll keep them for a video just by, just by themselves. What is this? One small package. And a well-packed package as well. There's nothing like a well-packed package. There you go, just rip the... Oh, it's, it smells. It's got a smell to it of joss sticks or something. It smells like it could have come from Glastonbury. There's a card. Let's have a look at this. Oh, look at that. Look at that there. A little present for you from... I haven't got my glasses. Valerie, I think it says. Let me read that. Oh, Anne, your A's look like a V. <laughs> so I will read that in the privacy of my own home. So very, very thankful for Anne for sending that. So let's have a look what she sent. Ah, I was right. Two just, uh, was it one, two, three joysticks of different uh, smells? And a box. What's this? I do like a bit of old uh, wrapping paper. Like this. I'll probably keep this. Is it a loaf of bread or something? Let's have a look. What is this then? Mossy Orc. What is Mossy Oak? I've never heard of that before. Next time I do this, I'm gonna bring a pair of scissors in. It's heavy, whatever it is. Oh. Look at this. What you call it? It's like a Swiss Army knife, but it's got tools on it. Look at that. Look at that. Now this would be handy down, down the plot. It's got a pliers on it. I'll have to grow my nails out so I can get the things out. Look at that, it's got a saw. Look at the edge on that. That'll cut you up, wouldn't it? I might have to be a bit careful going through the streets with this. I might get stopped by the police. Look, there's a, two saws, screwdrivers, there's loads of stuff, right. I will have a cup of tea in a minute. And I will enjoy finding out 
what I can do with it. I've got to find out how to close it first without cutting my arm off. Right, I'll do, I'll do that in a minute. So thank you very much to Anne for sending me that and for everybody else who is sending the gifts. It is certainly going to be a very full birthday month. Beautiful. When I woke up this morning, Walton's Mountain there had some snow on it. I noticed that a lot of the spring bulbs have popped up, but it's now hailstorming, which it has been doing for the past few days. It's a nice hyacinth there. But yes, we're having a last little flurry of winter before we get into spring. Oh, that's what I'm hoping anyway. On Amazon, I bought some, I don't know what you call them, droplets for the cupboard here. And they're a bit smaller, so I don't know how I'm going to work this. Because I've just realised they've got screws on. Okay, let's just take one off, because obviously, if I'm going to change them, I need to change the whole lot. But let's just take one off and see where we end up. I wonder if these will come off quite easily. Oh no, that's too thick. Right, it's a bit dark here, so let me use my light. Try and put a bit of... Right, okay. There's one, two, three screws need to come off. And I need a much smaller screwdriver. Okay, this is not as easy as I initially thought. I might have to abandon this, because I don't think I've got the proper screwdriver. No. Oh well. I need to get something out that's really small to go in there. I wonder if a knife will do. <laughs> this may actually work, let's have a look now. No, even a knife is too thick. Oh well, I tried. Let's give up now and do something else. Now I was hoping to get into the garden today and even though it was a beautiful start to the day the rain has begun but I've got some plants to go in some roses, daffodils, saxifrage but not today not in this rain Well I've just hunted high and I've just hunted low and I do not have a small spoon anywhere in the house. I don't know where they've gone. Maybe the cat has been collecting them up and has hidden them somewhere. But I, ha I have no idea. I've looked everywhere. The fridge, the I've even looked in the bathroom and I can't find them. So it is the mystery of the missing teaspoons. So when I make tea now, I'm having to use my big spoon. But I just don't know where they've gone. Nobody's been here, it's, you know. Who would go to somebody's house and go, I'm gonna 
nick the spoons. <laughs> so I think there must be a bit of a... Maybe there's a spirit here who was addicted to spoons. But I just can't find... It's a bit like socks, although I've got plenty of socks. I find if you just buy black socks, then you're, you'll always find a pair. But these spoons, I have no idea where they've gone. And I don't want to buy any more because I know they'll turn up. But it's getting to the point where I might have to. But I had about 12. And they've just gone. Anyway, it's not anything to get stressed about, is it? So during my time off this week, it was the first time where I had thoughts about whether I was missing London or, or not. So I'm planning to go back for a visit in the autumn. I think it's just the weather has slightly got on top of me over the last week. When I came here, we had fantastic sunshine for about three weeks and it was very nice. But recently, it's just typical Welsh weather. Rain, rain, and just a bit more rain added on top. Who's this? Somebody's keen to get in contact. Oh, your waitress order is due tomorrow. Well, I know. I have a device on my Instagram where you can put your phone into sleep so it doesn't give you the notifications. But then when you switch it on in the morning, it says you missed 20 notifications. And it's like, well, yes, I know, because I wanted to miss them. So you don't have to tell me that I've missed them because I know that I've missed them. I was talking to a friend the other day and he said what he does is when he takes his daughter to school in the morning and when he goes to collect her, he has set his phone up so that it switches off. So even though his phone is on, you can't phone him between the hours of eight and half nine, I think. And then from three o'clock until uh, nine in the night, he's done it so that nobody can contact him. And I thought that's quite a, that's quite a good way although i don't really get any any phone calls now i just usually get text messages and and emails and if i do get a phone call it's usually have you had an accident oh that's all it seems to be in this house is just cleaning anyway that's all for now can't have too much of a good thing can you now, I'm not very good with weights and measures. So when I was on Amazon the other day and I needed to buy some popcorn, I thought that's a good price. And it's turned out I've got two kilograms. So I've got loads of popcorn to possibly see me through for the rest of the year. And I wanted to buy some loose leaf Yorkshire tea. So I thought that's a good price, I'll buy some. Well, look, I've ended up with enough Again, although this, to be honest, will only be in enough for about three months. But I've got one, two, three, four, five, six packets of Yorkshire tea. It's as if there's a war coming and I'm stocking up. I bought coconut flour. But I can't remember the reason why I bought it now. But I'm going to attempt to do my own bread, but do it in the slow cooker. And from the research I've done, this is the best flour, end corn. And I've used this about a year or two ago. I was put onto it by Richard Vorbes. And apparently end corn is the original grain before they started to m mess around with the grains back in the the 60s so this is the original one it's a lot more of a heavier grain when you turn it into bread but it does have a fantastic flavor to it 
Well, I've quite enjoyed this time off that I've had. It's turned out that I ended up having a week off and it was very gratefully received. One of the things I've been doing on my time off is sitting down and exploring my diet and about what I'm going to change. And I'm waiting for a Waitrose delivery to come tomorrow, in fact. I was waiting in this morning for a parcel because I had a card to say, we tried to call yesterday, but you weren't in. So I thought, okay, I'll stay in today. Completely forgot that it's Good Friday today and there is no post. And now it's half 12 and the rain has come. But anyway, the other day I had a parcel delivered. I've bought myself a popcorn machine because on this new lifestyle that I'm going to do, it's going to be low carbs, high protein and high fiber and as a little snack they've suggested that you can have sweet corn as long as you don't add uh, salt and sugar and stuff so I thought the problem with my cooker is I'm I can't get my head around the the strength of the heat so I've tried doing popcorn on there and I've burnt it so I thought seeing as it's my birthday in April I'll treat myself so I bought some popcorn and you don't need much, just a little scoop. You just put it straight in and you don't even need to add, to add any oil. Watch this now. It's a bit noisy, so stand by your beds. So it cooks it by blasting really hot air and it's really quick we have popcorn now within about a minute we'll be shooting out of there as a nice little snack You do need to stand by the side of it and what I may do is I may buy a clean tea towel that I'll just use just to stand and hold it in because sometimes some bits of it do fly across the kitchen but if you get one of these I'll put the link to this in the description below but it's very warm when it comes out because it is blasting hot air all around because I burnt myself the first time I tried it. Right, that's cool enough now to go inside. So I've started doing this with the popcorn maker and with the toaster, putting them back and uh, it's no great shakes. And there we have it, popcorn as a quick and easy snack. Beautiful. Right, I think I'll have a cup of tea while I'm here. I'm going to talk about if you want to know more about this lifestyle that I'm doing, I can film the the meals. So once the waitrose turns up, then I can go into it in a bit more detail. If that is something you are interested in, tell me below. Right, seeing as it's still afternoon, I might keep this for this evening. <coughs> Another thing I've bought myself, in fact I haven't tried this yet because the, the cats were here, they're upstairs at the moment and I didn't want to scare them. Because I'm going to get my bike out soon, now that spring is apparently here, there are a few buds on the trees but it feels like winter. I've bought an, what's it called, a smart air pump. Because it does become a bit of a pain when you stood on the side of the road pumping up your tyres and I need to check I think there could be a leak in one of my tyres but I'll be needing it to go to the allotment so oh. 
There we go. That was a fun. So I'll have to read up on the instructions. Oh, I found out the because I went and read the book. Because you know what we like. Something turns up and you throw the book to one side. But I read it, and apparently to turn these lights to a different colour, all you do is you just put your finger and you leave it on there for a second too long. And it turns colour and it's got three different shades. So I quite like either that one or that one. So yes, they'll be very handy in the uh, sh in the shed. The first I've noticed this in the past. The first time back after having a break, the first video that people usually make after they've had their break. It does feel a bit weird. It takes about a video or two to, to get back into the, uh, into the swing of things. So yes, it's Easter weekend, so I hope you're having a very good Easter. I'm not doing anything special. I was hoping we'd have some nice weather so I could go for a walk, but I was in the village this week and quite a few people were saying that the weather has now got to that point where it's getting a bit annoying. <laughs> I had some pictures sent to me this morning. So, right, hold on to your hats now, because this is a bit of a complicated situation. As you know, I've got, or I had an allotment in London. So I paid the rent, and then, about a month later, I moved down to here in Wales. But I'd still paid the rent for the whole year. So I still own an allotment in London. Now, if you remember, was it a year ago? I spent about six hundred pounds worth on fruit, on apples, pears, cherries, plums, and if you've watched me for a while, you would know I have a bit of a fixation on the Victorian Kitchen Garden TV series with Harry Dodson and Peter Thoday. And I met Peter, and I went to visit the garden a few years ago. So I'll put the links to those videos below. So I bought a lot of these varieties that appeared in the series, so they were a bit more expensive than your average conference pair. So I planted them because at the time I didn't know I was going to leave. So they're on the allotment at the moment. And the plan so far is, is that a friend of mine is looking after the plot and I will go back in October and dig up the fruit and then bring the fruit down to Wales and put it onto my allotment. It was a bit of a catch-22 situation because if I dug them up January, okay, it could, I like to dig my fruit up November, December, but I could have dug them up January, but I had no way here at the time to put them because I didn't know if I was going to have a plot. And I thought I don't want to put them in a, in a pot and take a chance that I will get a plot. So it's a bit of a long-winded way to do about it, but I will get a, a van later in the year and I'll go up and I'll collect the fruit and whatever else is on my plot and then bring it down and use it on my plot in the village, which I've got and you will see in about a week or two's time. It's in a bit of a mess at the moment, so there's a lot of cleaning to be, to be done. And I'm only having an ambition to do six foot before May so I can get some crops in anyway and then I'll worry about doing the rest as the summer goes on but this is a very long-winded way of saying that the friend who is looking after the plot sent me some pictures this morning and this is a picture of my shed and the rhubarb and he said the rhubarb is so big he can't get into the shed and what did I put on the rhubarb to make it so big? And he might not want to know this, but what I used to do it was, when I had a pea in the shed, I used to throw it on top of the rhubarb. Gives it a nice sweet taste. So I will look forward to a few sticks of that. He's going to put them in a box and send them down. It's a bit like the Victorian kitchen garden. I have a garden. I have somebody who's tending the garden. 
and he'll send me down boxes of veg as the year goes on, like a true Victorian. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to have a cup of tea now, and I'm going to go and edit this video so that you can see it on Sunday morning. So yeah, it feels a bit of a disjointed one because I've had some time off. I feel quite refreshed. I haven't done anything at all. I've just caught up on my sleep and spent time looking into my new uh, diet for my non-alcoholic fatty liver to deal with that because I need to get a handle on it because I'm getting a bit more pain on this side. And as I was speaking to a friend, he said he has exactly the same pain and he's just been diagnosed with non-alcoholic fatty liver. And I had never equated that the two were the same. So I've spent all these days sat down looking at information on the internet, cross-referencing it to make sure that it's, um, you know, been tried and tested. So I'm going to start that in a few days and hopefully we can lose a bit of weight before my 50th birthday, which is towards the end of April. So I will catch up with you really soon. I'm going to enjoy a nice cup of tea now. That is one thing I'm not going to give up. Cup of tea. I'll give up everything else, the cakes, the biscuits, but not a cup of tea. But anyway, I'll catch up with you next time. So for me until then, bye for now.